and welcome to Screen Blitz, the weekly film and television show where I give you all the top news, views, reviews, previews, features, opinions and more. I'm your host Grant Burton, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton or you can go to forcebygrant.wordpress.com for all of my written reviews. Now, I'm about to start the show and it looks like the weather's taken a turn for the worst. It looks like it might rain, it's definitely getting windy, so if that's picked up on the microphone, I am sorry about that. Also... This week I'm going to have time limitations on the amount of time I have to edit this show, so I will be doing a shorter show with no big topic, so I apologise for that. And if you're watching live on Twitch, you can get involved with the show, get in the chat, I will look in there. At the end of the show we have a good hangout and a little discussion about everything I've talked about. It's all fun and games. If you're watching this on YouTube though, you can get in the comments, subscribe, Give me a thumbs up and, yeah, give me some advice. Tell me what I'm doing right. I got a couple of negative comments this week, which I wasn't very happy with. So just a word of warning. If you are inappropriate, offensive, insulting, or just plain looking for an argument, you will be ignored and I will remove your comment. So, yeah. I'm not opposed to getting criticism, though, if as long as it's constructive. Otherwise... Let's get on with the show. It's a slow news week, so there's not much to talk about, although a lot of things happened yesterday, just a little too late for me to actually add into the show. But we start each and every week with the news. Item number one is from Ben Travis at Empire. Train du Busan follow-up coming, shooting in 2019, and it's called Bando, which means Peninsula. So... If you haven't seen Train to Busan, it's probably one of the best zombie films ever made. It's definitely one of the best in recent years, there's no doubt about that. And what's interesting is that it does something different, it's got a unique style and approach to the zombie genre. It's If you've seen the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead, it's kind of like that in the way it represents the zombies. but. Yeah, there's just something that's different. It's a very emotional story. The characters are good. I don't know what I'd want from a sequel, to be honest, but as long as it does something that sets it apart from, like, The Walking Dead and stuff like that, I will be happy to see a sequel. Story number two. This is from Adam Bankhurst at IGN. Star Trek Discovery casts its Spock. Ethan Peck has been cast as Spock. So, we knew Spock was going to be in there. He's the stepbrother of Michael Burnham, the main character in Star Trek Discovery. And it was inevitable that he was going to show up. It's a little bit of a shame that it's not Zachary Quinto, but I understand it. Zachary Quinto is probably a very busy actor. And also, you might want to distance yourself from the J.J. Abrams universe, especially since this isn't set in that universe, which I just think is bizarre because it looks and feels like it should be in that universe. But yeah, I don't really know this actor. He kind of looks the part, I suppose. You get him on with them fake ears and do his hair up. He'll probably be a good-looking Spock. And good-looking in the sense that he'll look like Spock. And yeah, my worry is that maybe Star Trek Discovery is going to rely too much on classic characters. We already know Captain Pike is returning as well. And... I have no problem with him or Spock being in there. We've got Sarek in there as well. Just don't go overboard, you know. Make this about the actual main characters of Discovery. Next up. Ewan McGregor says no Obi-Wan movie is in development. He was speaking on The View and he said, I would totally do it, of course. There's no plans as such to do it as far as I know. So Lucasfilm likes the secrets. That's very well known. They have lots of things in development, and then they like to have big reveals about them. So Ewan McGregor McGregor could very well be playing Koi here, I think. He could be lying, or maybe he's telling the truth, because there was the reports that the Star Wars films, the spin-off ones, have been put on hold, but no one's quite sure what's going on with Lucasfilm after the release of Solo, A Star Wars Story. And... Here's the thing, I think almost universally everyone wants Ewan McGregor to come back as Obi-Wan in some form. He's rumoured to be in 
the upcoming Star Wars Episode 9, but whether that will happen, I don't know. He did do a line of dialogue for The Force Awakens that some people might not know of, but yeah, I want more Ewan McGregor. I want him in his own Star Wars movie, but I don't know if it's actually happening. Next up. supposed to be the Terminator theme song because Tony K has cast a robot in the lead of his next movie, Second Born. The robot will be trained in acting techniques and methods, whatever that means. The idea is to forego the use of computer generated effects and they hope the robot will get SAG recognition. SAG is Screen Actors Guild Awards or Screen Actors Guild and this is from Amanda and Duca at Deadline. So. This sounds like it was a joke that somebody just didn't get and they thought it was serious and now it's went a little too far, but the machines are literally starting to take over and I don't know how I feel about this. I understand the need to not do CGI and to try and do everything with practical effects, but how much does a robot cost? Is a robot in the long run going to be cheaper than CGI? I don't know. I'm not a special effects wizard, and can a robot act? The same is going to get some acting methods and techniques, but does that just mean it's going to be programmed to act? Does it mean that someone's actually going to be controlling it behind the scenes or something? I haven't a clue what to make of this, and if a robot can act independently, if it is an in artificial intelligence, will that make it eligible for any awards? It's already getting SAG recognition, or it's trying to at least, so, yeah, just where does this end, and at what point does this stop being like a bit of a joke? Who knows. Moving on to the trailers this week, I did say there was very little newsworthy stuff going on, so, first trailer was the Romanoffs, and not a lot to say about this trailer, it was basically a bunch of big names, famous faces, coming on and saying the name Romanoff in various different ways and in various different fashions. And the cast looks brilliant. Like almost everyone I saw in this trailer, I recognized or I know. And this is another anthology show. It's from the makers of Mad Men, so Matthew Weiner. And I'm not keen on anthology shows. I think there might be a few too many of them. I prefer long form storytelling. And yeah, anthology shows aren't always for me. But yeah, not a lot to say about the Romanoffs, although it's clearly got a big budget in order to get all the big names in it. Iron Fist Season 2 released its... I want to say the first official trailer. There was a teaser a while back. And Iron Fist has this going for it in this season. And that is that it couldn't be any worse than the last season. So the only way is up, because the first season was terrible. Um, so, they've made a few changes, notably it's now only 10 episodes instead of 13. The Marvel Netflix shows have always been like 3 or 4 episodes longer than they needed to, so maybe this will help. They've changed showrunners, I believe, and one of the big problems with the last season was the writing, so maybe this change of showrunners will alter that in a little bit. I think they've also got the choreographers for the action scenes from Daredevil, so the action scenes should be a little different this season. Again, one of the big problems in the first season was the action scenes, the choreography and the performances were just really bad. See, I don't know much about Iron Fist or Danny Rand, but my understanding is that he's supposed to be like the world's greatest martial artist, he's supposed to be a brilliant fighter and an expert in his field. And that just never came across in the first season. So hopefully they can address that a bit more in the second season and actually do a better job with the fight scenes. And speaking of Danny Rand and Iron Fist, Finn Jones was, I think, miscast in the role. I don't think he's a bad actor. I think his actual performance is fine. It's just the character is annoying and not likable. And that's a problem when he's the main character in the show. Jessica Henwick, meanwhile, brilliant. I wish this show was all about her. She's great. She's the best thing about it, to be honest. So, some of the things simply can't be changed. The characters, for example, 
you might be able to tweak them here and there, but you're stuck with them now, basically. And, yeah, it looks like they're going a bit darker this season. They're going more into the comic book roots of the show. There were hints of his classic comic book look and outfit. So, I'm for season 2 debuts next month. It's actually pretty soon. September 7th, I think it was. And, yeah, I'm curious about this. Hopefully it's better than the first, but if it's not, I will be amazed because I did not like the first season at all. Green Book. So, this is an Oscar bait film if ever I've seen one. The directing, the acting, the cinematography, everything, they're clearly going for rewards. They're trying to be something special and the themes and messages came across blare glaringly in this trailer. Which I don't have a problem with. The, the film looks like it could be fun. It was pretty funny, actually. A lot of good jokes in there. Viggo Mortensen. We don't see enough of him. He's actually a good actor. Outside of Lord of the Rings. And, yeah, he looks like he's having good fun here. And Mahershala Ali is always great. So, yeah. Not too much to say about this. But it looks like it could be a pretty good film. So just keep an eye out for it. And the final trailer this week. Roma. So this is Alfonso Cuaron's first film since Gravity, and I don't know what he's been doing since then, because that was quite a while ago now. And I got major Italian neo-realism vibes from this, not just because it was in black and white. Of course, Alfonso Cuaron is Mexican, not Italian, but still. The thing I noticed about this trailer is that there was no dialogue in there, no speech, so I left this trailer having no idea what this film is about. It is a Netflix film as well, but yeah, this trailer did not win me over at all because it didn't really say or show anything of value. So that's it for the news and trailers this week. If you've liked what you've seen, then I'd appreciate a subscription. It was shorter, like I said it would be. Sorry about that, but yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. If you're watching on Twitch, get in the chat. I'll be discussing some of these things a bit more in the post show. And yeah, thanks for watching so far.